Hurricane Milton, no joke. Uh, thoughts and prayers go out to everybody who was affected by this awful storm. Uh, as you know, Miami did not travel up here to the uh, uptown Charlotte location because more important things, you got to take care of home. And uh, again, our thoughts and prayers go out to everybody. Uh, it's just crazy what's happened with Mother Nature here the last couple of weeks. We've been affected big time here in the southeast, needless to say. But uh, nevertheless, thoughts and prayers to everybody. Hope everything's going to be okay. And with that said, let's go down to Miami. Jim Larinaga joins us, and uh, we look forward to touching base with Coach. Coach, uh, first thing, and it's the most important thing, uh, how are you and how's everybody doing in South Florida? Well, obviously it was a very difficult week. We're still waiting for the updates uh, on the damages uh, caused by Milton. Uh, we were not able to fly up to Charlotte because, quite frankly, the planes were not going to take off. And so um, my staff and I are here preparing for practice, but uh, my thoughts and prayers also go, go to the people, especially on, on the West Coast and, and through the middle part of Florida who have uh, experienced uh, an awful experience. So my wife and I also have a home in Sarasota. We're going to be leaving after practice on Saturday to head to the West Coast and see, you know, what kind of damages were done. So, uh, but Mother Nature wins every battle. We'll be thinking of you, Coach. It's, it's terrible that uh, you follow up Helene with Milton, and it just didn't even have time to, to clean things up. I hope everything's okay uh, in Sarasota. But talking about this team, Coach, you're, you got a really talented top 10 class coming in. Tell us about some of these young guys and what excites you. Well, first of all, what's unique about this recruiting is, is we have 10 new guys we have five freshmen, and starting with, with uh, a young man named Divine Ugachuku, who comes from Houston, Texas. He was uh, um, recommended by Hakeem Olajuwon. He's joined with Jalil Bethea, who was a McDonald's All-American, won the McDonald's Slam Dunk Contest. And then we have uh, Austin Schwartz, who's an outstanding long-range shooter. Uh, Isaiah Johnson Arigu, six seven and uh, a terrific athlete and very skilled player, and we have a walk on by the name of Xander Allery, who ACC fans will know because his dad Mark Allery played at Duke, and then they they are joining uh, some uh, seniors uh, led by uh, Nigel Pack, who's returning for his third season with us, Jalen Blackman, a transfer from Stetson. Uh, Matt Cleveland, uh, the transfer from Florida State, who was with us last year, and Paul Jobet, a, a student athlete from France, just outside of Paris, who uh, was with us last year and had a solid freshman year. And then uh, a couple of big guys, Lynn Kidd, who played in uh, the ACC, both at Clemson and Virginia Tech, Kyrie Yui, a transfer from Idaho State, and uh, Brandon Johnson, a transfer from East Carolina, so quite a lot of new faces. And the last one is uh, A.J. Stanton McCray, a transfer from Sanford. Coach, if it makes you feel better, for the last three days we've been interviewing all kinds of coaches and players from everybody in the league. Uh, you're not alone. I mean, it's almost like every single interview with a coach is like, well, I've got five new names or ten new names or whatever the combination may be. I, I guess it's just the, the current status of where we are right now in college basketball, and this is going to become the norm, I guess, moving forward. I, I think it is, Pac. We, there's 104 transfers in the ACC now, and we have 18 mm. teams, so you figure out it's five or six or seven guys transferring in and it will be every year because when the transfer portal opens a lot of young men looking for playing time looking for a different opportunity uh they're they're going to put their name into the portal and and see if they can find the grass green or someplace else Coach, I think the best teams I've seen, they have that, that core group of holdovers, the identity pieces to the team. They bring in the young talent. You guys have obviously done that. And then they execute adding those pieces in the portal. You've done so well in the portal since, you've, since it's been open, really. But how do you attack that? How, what's, your, what's your philosophy or priorities when you're looking at portal guys and kind of how you add them into the team? Well, a lot of it is based on the process. Recruiting now for high school kids 
really starts in the spring of their junior year. You keep an eye on them throughout the summer. And then in the fall, you bring them in for official visits and hopefully you sign your top guys. But even if you sign like we did last year, we signed three really good freshmen. Uh, um, we didn't know how many more scholarships we were going to have available. And not until the spring when guys turned pro, when guys transferred themselves, that opened up the door for us to go back to the portal and actually go back to high school where we got uh, Divine Ugachuku. So we brought in, in the spring, the transfers and uh, Divine to give us a 13-man scholarship roster. Love it, Coach. I, I do remember, I mean, you remember me back in the day as like a defensive specialist. I get it. <laughs> but I know I remember hearing you say it many times <laughs> about you got to prioritize defense or you're not going to play. Last year, in not a very typical Jim Laranega team on the defensive end. Tell me about how you can basically be more potent on the defensive end, but how you replace some of those pieces. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny you should say that, Luke, because our team in, in practice, we've had two scrimmages uh, both on the last two Saturdays. The first scrimmage, uh, the final score was uh, 109 to 97, and the next was 100 <laughs> to 85. So we haven't improved our defense one lick, but yesterday the players were kidding me and, and, and saying, Coach, are we ever going to do any offensive drills anymore? Because the last several days of practice, we have not done a single offensive drill. Everything's been based on the defense, and hopefully we'll get better in these next uh, several weeks before we open up in November, and then certainly improve after we've played a few games and hopefully learn from them, uh, improve our defense uh, going into December, where we are, are loaded with a very demanding schedule. Coach, uh, it sounds like an NBA game going on there. You know, I'm so used to seeing Norchette O'Meara and the physicality inside. Despite being small, I mean, he was so tough and physical. Uh, that physical presence at the rim, do you think you found a combination here with all these new guys you brought in? I certainly hope so. Lynn Kidd is an accomplished ACC caliber player. Uh, Kyrie Huey has been a very pleasant addition. And Brandon Johnson, throughout the preseason, so far has been our leading rebounder. So those three guys add an awful lot to our front court because they're 6'10", 6'9", and 6'8". That's taller than any starter last season or even the final four year. Um, we've, we've moved uh, Matthew Cleveland to the perimeter. He's more of a 2-3 man now. Hopefully his rebounding at the, uh, at the three spot will add to our ability to keep people off the backboards. But defense is certainly our number one priority. We, we should be able to score the ball. We've got a lot of weapons there. Coach, I don't know exactly when you would pinpoint last season where things kind of took a turn, but what were your conversations like with Nigel Pack through that process and, and kind of struggling down the stretch last year? And has he learned from those things, or what's he going to bring to the table this year from that leadership aspect? Well, it happened so early in the season. Uh, we, when we played at Kentucky, uh, we were not ourselves. We, we did not play like a Miami team. And then we had some really key injuries. Nigel was the first one to go down. He missed two weeks of practice. And then as soon as he got well, uh, Wooga Poplar went down with a sprained ankle. And then in the very next game on the road at Wake Forest, Nigel sprained his ankle and Norshad sprained his ankle. So we were really playing with uh, three of our starters injured and not playing at all or really playing uh, uh, not at 100%. They, they just were not themselves. And then you add to that, we had several other injured players throughout January, and this team was not able to overcome that. Coach, I had to do a double take when I read the stuff this morning, actually this morning and this week, getting ready for this. This is your 14th season at Miami, and I remember interviewing you as you were coming back to Miami for the first time. And, in fact, I know I've kidded about this with you before, 
and you're like, Pack, I'm going to be out there giving away pizzas. I just need to get people to show up because, man, we're starting from scratch, and I don't know what we're going to do, but we're going to get people excited. And if i got to go out there and high-five everybody and give out pizzas, and here you are. You've got an ACC championship. You've rock and rolled in March. You've done such a phenomenal job, but it's still hard to believe this is your 14th year at Miami. Like I said, I remember that interview like it was yesterday when you're trying to figure out a way. I hope I could get these Miami fans interested in college basketball. I mean, there were some people going, Larry Nega going back to Miami. What, what is he thinking? You can't win down there. Well, you proved everybody wrong, my man. You've done an amazing job. 14 years makes me feel old too, Coach, by the way. <laughs> So long ago I left, Luke, you were a sophomore at Jeff George Mason, and this will be my 14th season, but also the longest place I've ever coached. I was at, at, at Bowling Green for 11 years and George Mason for 14. So this is my home. This is paradise. I love it here. I love coaching. I have no intentions of stopping. I enjoy the kids every day. My favorite time of the day is practice. These kids are a lot of fun. I'm a teacher at heart, so I like working with the guys every day. I'm spending an awful lot of time with our freshmen this season because I think they have so much potential. And hopefully they'll play well this year, but hopefully they stay for, for four years or, you know, if they leave, go to the NBA. But uh, I, I I don't want to lose any of these guys to the transfer portal. They're too good, too good of people and too good of players. By the way, uh, for the record, we had video the other day of you celebrating your 39th birthday. So happy belated birthday from everybody here at ACC Network. Yeah, happy birthday, Coach. Yeah, th thanks a lot, guys. I I don't really celebrate birthdays. It's not a big deal to me. <laughs> they happen every year. It's not that big a deal. But I will. I will well, say I mean, this. I, 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 coach, I you, love you, you better to celebrate them, coach. Coach, you better what? celebrate them because it beats the alternative. That's fair. Yeah. No. I, you know, I want to stay above grass. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, just just think back a couple of years ago, we made it to the Elite Eight. No one expected us to do that. Then the next year, we made it to the Final Four. You know. In Luke's last year at George Mason, he'll, he'll remember how much fun we had. We set the George Mason record. We got to the, the NCAA tournament and beat Villanova, and Luke made the game-winning three. So that's fun. I have a lot of great memories uh, throughout my career, and I, I want to have more great memories from this season because we've got a lot of guys who are hungry, uh, some guys who've never been to the dance, who are dying to get there. And my staff and I want to lead that charge. Well, we wish you the very best. Uh, stay healthy. And more importantly, with all the stuff going on in the state of Florida, I hope everybody's going to be as safe as possible. And, again, we wish you the very best. We look forward to seeing you down the road when the season gets started. Uh, my pleasure, guys. Sorry I couldn't be there in Charlotte with you. We understand. Keep up the good work, Coach.